Hello, and welcome to how to use the Azure Change Tracking and Inventory Solution to track software, registry, and file changes. I have already created an Azure Automation account called Change Management. The first thing we need to do is enable Change Tracking and Inventory. Under Configuration Management, let's click on Inventory. Here, we will be prompted to either select an existing workspace or create a new one. I'm going to select Create a New Workspace, then click Enable. This may take a minute or two. Once we get the information message that the Change Tracking and Inventory solution was enabled, we need to go back and reload the Inventory page. Next, let's go ahead and onboard some machines that we would like to track. Here we have two options. We can either add Azure VMs or non-Azure machines. Let's start with Azure VMs. From my list of available Azure VMs, I'm going to select the nodes I wish to track. Here, I'm going to select my two Windows VMs I've already created, and then click Enable. This will submit a deployment to install the software needed for change in inventory tracking and connect the VM to this automation account. Now that those VMs have been enabled, I'm going to go back and reload the inventory page. It may take some time for the machines to register themselves and start reporting, so I'm going to move on to onboarding a non-Azure machine. If we click on Add Non-Azure Machine, this will open a page with the instructions on connecting a computer to Azure, and I'm going to walk through the steps necessary. Let's go back to the automation account and scroll down to Linked Workspace. From this screen, click on Go to Workspace. This will take us to the Log Analytics workspace we created when we enabled change tracking and inventory. Here, we'll need to go under Connect a Data Source and click on Windows, Linux, and Other Sources. From this page, select the operating system of your computer and download the corresponding agent. I have already downloaded the 64-bit agent to my local server. Then, make sure you copy the workspace ID and primary key to use later. Now I've switched over to my local server that I want to onboard. I'm going to run the installer that I just downloaded. Click on Next, then I Agree, and then click Next to accept the installation folder. On the next screen, check off Connect the Agent to Azure Log Analytics, then click Next. Now paste both the Workspace ID and Workspace key from earlier. If you need to configure proxy settings, click Advanced. Otherwise, just click Next. I'm going to choose not to use Microsoft Update, but the choice is yours here. And finally, let's click Install. Once that completes, click on Finish, and let's switch back to the Azure portal. I'm now back to my automation account, and it's been a little while since installing the monitoring agent locally. You can see that my two Azure VMs are now reporting and an information alert has popped up saying that a machine does not have change tracking enabled. So let's go ahead and click on Manage Machines. For this demo, I'm going to select Enable on Selected Machines. You could enable on all available machines or all available in future machines. If you select future machines, you will not need to run this step when onboarding new machines. So I'm going to click Add to add my local server and click Enable. It will take a little while for that machine to start reporting, so let's continue with the rest of the demo. On the inventory page, we have links for software, files, Windows registry, Windows services, Linux daemons, and machine groups. Let's start with software. Here we can see a list of software installed on our reporting machines. We can see the name, version, publisher, and number of machines that the software is installed on. You may also notice that Google Chrome is installed on one of the machines. You may want to use change tracking to monitor your servers for rogue software like this in your environment. If I click on Google Chrome, it will show a list of the properties for that software as well as which machines the software is installed on. Both files and registry have no data yet. That's because they have not been configured. Under Windows Services, 
we can see the services running on our machines, as well as what state they are in. Now let's go ahead and set up some files to monitor. To do this, click on Edit Settings, and first we will see a list of registry keys that are monitored by default. These are not enabled by default, and each one would need to be enabled in order to track these changes. Before I configure files to monitor, let's click on File Content. This is where we will specify a storage account for storing the monitored files so we can compare changes to the file contents. We need to go ahead and link to an existing storage account where the files will be stored. I'm going to select my subscription, then I'm going to select the storage account I want to use. And I'm also going to make sure upload file content for all settings. This will allow us to view the changes to the content later. Now click on Save. Let's go ahead and configure the files now. Click on Windows Files, and then click on Add. First, I'm going to add a test text file that I want to monitor. This will be located on the C drive. After entering the name and path, I'm going to set Upload File Content to True. This will allow us to view the changes to the content later. Now click on Save. Now I'm going to click on Add again, and this time I'm going to add a test folder on the C drive to monitor. I'm also going to set Upload File Content to True. We can also follow the same steps for files on Linux machines. By default, it is set up to monitor configuration files in the Etsy folder. OK, now we can close the workspace configuration and wait for the machines to report in. I've waited and refreshed the inventory page, and you can see that there are changes that have been reported. You can see from the machines list that my local server is now reporting as a non-Azure machine. If I click on Files, you can see the test file and test folder that I created. Those are both reporting on my Windows 01 machine. Now let's go back to my Azure VM where I'm going to make some changes to the text files. First, I'm going to open the test text file and I'm just going to add some content. I'm going to save that file and close it. Now I'm going to go into my test folder and change the contents of the text file in there. I'm also going to add a new file to this folder. Now let's switch back to Azure and wait for the changes to be reported. Now if I go to Change Tracking, I can see recent changes to the machines in this list, including the file changes. Here I can click on the Test Text file and then click on View File Content Changes. This will show you the changes that were made to that file side by side or inline. Inventory data is also sent to Azure Log Analytics. We can search these logs by selecting Log Analytics at the top of the Inventory or Change Tracking window. By default, there is a query that is pulling the configuration data and ordering it by the time generated. I'm going to paste in a query that's going to look for software where the publisher is Google Inc. This will show us the machines where any Google software is installed, such as Chrome. You can also use the fields on the left-hand side to narrow down your searches as well. And that was how to use the Azure Change Tracking and Inventory solution to track software, registry, and file changes.